Hello, good morning, District 200. We are back for a second edition of Live in Your Community Schools. Today we're gonna to be at Madison Elementary. Uh, Madison Elementary is a neighborhood school. It's tucked away in an in a awesome neighborhood just south of Roosevelt Road and just east of the Mary and Joy property. So we are very excited to uh, bring them onto the show today. Uh, my name is Erica Loyakno. I'm the Director of Communications here in the district. Uh, and we are very excited to bring you our second live edition of Live in Your Community Schools. Uh, we hope that through this show, we give you, our community members, a look inside our classrooms classrooms and learning have changed in recent years and we want to show that to you and bring that to you on a regular basis. So uh, principal, Mr. Tim Callahan to join the show. He's going to give us an overview of Madison while we add Mr. Callahan to the show. Uh, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Madison Elementary was built in 1964 and Madison is uh, home to about 450 uh, kindergarten through fifth graders in the district. So let's bring Mr. Callahan on. There he is. How are you, Mr. Callahan? Hi, doing great, Erica. How are you? So where are you right now, Mr. Callahan? I am in our LLC, our Library Learning Center. And tell us a little bit what's going on in Madison's library right now. Well, uh, Every time is a busy time in our library, uh, but 11.30 a.m., I'm, I'm seeing a lot going on here. So uh, I see we've got kids enjoying some independent reading time. We have groups collaborating and uh, looks like working on some typing skills behind me. I know we've got some fifth grade collaboration groups that are working on researching, researching the seven wonders of the world. And uh, typically we have some intervention groups, uh, guided reading groups, and some enrichment groups that really spill out of the classrooms uh, around our library. So how many class classes would you say that are, are in the library right now? That's, that's uh, let's see. I think I spy kids from all three of our fifth grade classes. Um, as well as uh, some fourth graders as well. A lot of our younger students are at lunch right now, so it's uh, it's definitely an intermediate feel here. Do the students know that we're on TV right now? Can we maybe sh ask them to say hi and give us a little wave? Hey guys, do you know that we're, we're on Facebook Live right now? Why don't you g give a wave, say hi. Hi everybody. I think some are aware and some are not. <laughs> okay, okay. That's good, they're, they're, work, they're working hard. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Callahan. I think now we're gonna talk to Mrs. Diane Graham. Mrs. Graham is the school's librarian or LLC director. Uh, we'll go ahead and add her to the broadcast right now. And welcome Mrs. Graham to the show. Hi, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much. So you are standing right now, uh, you are in the library, but you are standing right in front of the school's new Get Fit Lab. Is that correct? Correct. And so can you tell us first, the role of the library and in particular the school librarian has dramatically changed in the last several years, but in particular the last five to 10 years. Can you talk to us a little bit about the changing role of the library and the, your role uh, at the school now? Sure. The library used to be a quiet place where students read or they write up reports based on print material. But currently, and as you can see, we are the hub of the school. This is where all the activity takes place. We are an extension of the classroom. So you'll see students checking out their own books, uh, reading by themselves, reading with each other. They're working in groups on projects and they're also researching uh, issues that involve problem solving. And also they use a variety of resources, mostly online now. So you see them using Chromebooks, eBooks, iPads, and there's so much information out there. That's why the role of the librarian has really changed. We have become information specialists that we need to help them navigate through all this information and also teach them the tools to be successful and lifelong learners. Wonderful. So you are standing right now in front of the school's Get Fit Lab. Can you tell us about this space and how it became how it came to be? 
but we needed a space for hand-on learning for students to create and build and also think critically. So we took our old computer lab and we took out the desktops because now we have Chromebooks, which are portable, so that's great. And we worked with our Madison PTA, who were great in supporting this endeavor. They purchased three um, supply carts for us and more stools because we wanted this room to be able to fit a whole classroom. And as you can see, um, we also painted a, a green wall on the back there for video production. We got a grant from the District 200 Foundation for production equipment. And we also got a grant for Ozobots and some other really creative tools. Ozobots, what are those? Those are like robots and it helps student learn, students learn coding. And um, the other walls we painted. Uh, it certainly is a very, very busy place as we saw from Mr. Callahan showing us around, you showing us a glimpse into the Get Fit Lab. Uh, I think we're gonna meet Mrs. Dern. Mrs. Dern is a third grade teacher. She, her students are actually in the lab right now and uh, are going to be participating in a uh, engineering challenge here in a few minutes. But before we get to that, uh, let's welcome Mrs. Dern. So thank you for joining us today. Um, I hear today we're gonna watch your third graders test out structures they created. And the challenge was to create a structure that could withstand wind. Can you tell us more about that challenge and what led up to today? Absolutely. For the last two weeks, we've been reading a lot of different science textbooks as well as um, researching various websites to learn about the curriculum of weather in particular for science. The challenge that they're working on right now started earlier this week and they had to make a structure that it was at least 18 inches tall, could carry the weight of a tennis ball, and they only had the supplies of newspaper, straws, popsicle sticks, string, and tape. So it was a bit of a challenge. Um, and today what we're going to do is we're gonna test those structures with the real life implication that wind has on weather on their structures. And so we're gonna be doing that as we go into the room. So Mrs. Dern, I just put an image on the screen and I'll put it back in just a minute of the engineering design process. And that's a poster that's in the, in the Get Fit Lab. And when I put this image up, could you talk us, tell us more about this image and how your students followed this process? Absolutely. So over the years and more recently, the way that we have done things like the Fit Lab has changed. We're focusing more on the process than on the product. And the process you can see on the screen there, it's an engineering process. So what my students have done this year is they've, they've followed that. I've asked them a question and then they've worked in small groups collaboratively and they've been busy planning and they created and they had to recreate to um, improve their final structures, which you'll see today. It took a lot of perseverance, um, time and effort, but they've really enjoyed the process and they're really learning about the curriculum that they've learned, but doing it on a more hands-on basis about real life issues and worlds like wind and how wind affects our weather. Well, thank you for that explanation. I think next we are going to actually go into your into the Get Fit Lab. So let's walk on over there now. It's good. The kids are very excited to be a part of this, and here they are on the tables. You'll see the projects that they made and all of the students. So I'll take you through each table. Hi. We good are. morning. Good morning. Say hello. Hi. Hi. And here we go. There's more students over here. Notice the projects they made on their limited resources that they had. And they all did create those structures that the tennis ball could withstand that. Now we have to see if the impact of wind is going to work out. So the first group is ready to go with their structure. And we're going to blow wind at three different levels to see if it can withstand that impact. And here we go. Okay, okay, so here is wind level one. What do you think, boys and girls? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wind level two. And now we're moving to wind level two, even stronger wind. We know that there are different levels of wind in our real life weather. Yeah. Here's level three. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Very successful. 
Well, now we're bringing on group two. Group two has their unique structure that they created. And we're going to start back at level one wind. <laughs> and you'll notice when you see each of their structures is unique in so many ways. Okay, level two. Yeah. All right. Level three. Yay! 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 Nice job, nice job. Very good, boys and girls. So we have group three coming up. Again, a unique structure made of those restricted materials that we allowed them to use. They did a fantastic job. Let's see how the wind affects their structure. Level one, good job. Level two. Yes. And level three. Yes. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Very good, boys and girls. All that hard work and perseverance is paying off. Come on over. Let's see. Our next group is coming up. All right, here we go. We're going to start with level one wind. They worked very hard in this group. We persevered and we recreated several times to create the structure, and we're going to have to let it go. We're going to get it all. <laughs> we'll get it set up first. There you go. You got it. Let's try wind. Let's get the wind rolling. Okay, get the wind rolling. Here we go. Let's see. Level one. Level one. Okay, just let it go. Hey, all right, we did one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we got through one. Let's Why don't we try two? Right? One, two, three, go. Oh. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Right, the fun thing about the Get Fit Lab is that what we're going to do now is when we go back to class, we'll recreate, we'll replan, and we're going to problem solve and collaborate until the project is a success. And that's the fun. It's really all about the process, not the product. So great job, boys and girls. Great job. And we have the next group. Here we go. All right. Good job. All right. Level one two. Level two. All right. Not even going. All right. And they did it. Our last group to share with you. Notice how each structure is so unique and all the things that they problem solved to accomplish this. Thank you so much. It Mrs. So much Dern had a great time. We thank you. I don't know what we would do in this district without teachers like you. You have created such a memorable experience for our kids today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. The kids are wonderful. Great. And so I am very excited. Now, next we are going to go and we are going to hear from uh, two students who actually just tested out their structures. Uh, their names are Corinne and Abraham. And so I'm going to bring them onto the broadcast now. Welcome, Corinne and Abraham. How are you today? Good. Good. So how did it go? I, you just tested out your structures. Corinne, did your structure withstand the test? Yes, it did. Okay. And Abraham, how about your group? Um, our, ours got it too. Okay. So Corinne, what do you think was important for your design that made sure that it withstood the wind? Um, I think balance a lot because Without balance, your thing would just fall over. And without balance, with the tennis ball on it, it would just fall down, so. Okay, and Abraham, what do you think, what was it about your structure that made it withstand wind, in your opinion? Well, um, we put like popsicle sticks and straws inside our structure 
so when the wind comes, um, the popsicle sticks and straws can like, um, not make it fall like way inside it. So when it tries to um fall down, it can't. I just have to put this up on the screen. Corinne and Abraham, look at your classmates. They are watching you on the interview right now. Can you see each other? What a wonderful team building experience. Even though you were in small groups, you got to still bond together as a class and they are watching you. This is exciting. I am going to go back over to uh, Corinne and Abraham so we can hear more from them. So, uh, Abraham, what is it that you like or do you like this type of a classroom experience? And, and what is it that you got out of the experience? You're supposed to kneel down. I can't. Oh, let me, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> okay. So, Abraham, do you like this type of classroom experience and what did you learn today? Um, I like this type of experience because when, if I grow up, if I want to be like an engineer or build some stuff, um, I know how to withstand the wind and what to build to not make it fall down from like tornadoes and hurricanes. Okay. And Corinne, what did you like about today's challenge and what did you learn? I liked a lot how it helped to make teamwork and it kind of teaches you about engineering and how some things you kind of like, kind of you kind of need them to um, just succeed, I guess. Okay. So talk to me about your school. What do you love about Madison? Um, well, I like to get Fit Lab first of all because it's really fun and you get to, you know, like you get to like build whatever you want and be creative. So that's one of the things I like about it. So your favorite thing about Madison is the Get Fit Lab? The Get Fit Lab and the library. I like the big collection of books that they have just because I like to read a lot. So Okay. And Abraham, what is your favorite part of school? What do you love about school? Um, what I love about school is that we can build um, stuff like at the Gap Get Fit Lab. We can build um, structures, um, habitats, and um, uh, just be imagine. Just imagine what you have in your mind, and you can build it. We're going to say goodbye. So much for joining us today, Corinne, Abraham, all the kids at Madison. I have got to show you viewers one more time these wonderful faces. Are just so Madison students, great job today. I'm sure that you're Mrs. Dern, you're going to go back to the classroom and think about the project that you just worked on and, and any improvements or tweaks you guys want to make before you uh, retest them again. So thank you so much for uh, sharing your experience with us today. And we're, we were really glad to see you. So bye, everybody. Bye. bye. Well, thank you so much for joining us for Live in Your Community Schools. I don't know about you, but that was one of my favorite classroom visits, even though it was a virtual visit. The students in Madison and throughout all of our schools are so lucky to have teachers and staff that inspire them to learn and make every day a great day like that. And for joining us today and uh, experiencing that with us. Next month on February 9th, we are going to be at Washington Elementary. Some fifth grade students are going to be building rockets and landing them on a planet. So we're really excited to bring that to you. So please join us next month for another edition of Live in Your Community Schools. Have a great day, everyone.